Have you ever come back from a location and uh, posted it online and realized that your photographs are pretty much exactly the same as everybody else who's been in that same location? That's a function of the fact that the most attractive places attract more people, more photographers to go and, and take pictures. And of course, one of the things that you're trying to do is find good locations to go and shoot. So I've been thinking about uh, my own landscape photographs and whether they could be considered as more than just picturesque or, or scenic, whether I can introduce something into my photography which is a little bit different. And I've been thinking about cubism, where you're trying to present um, three-dimensional shapes in two dimensions, and particularly around landscape photography, the work of uh, uh, Peter Lanyon, who, who went up in his uh, uh, plane, or his glider, I can't remember if it was a glider or a plane, and took different um, pictures when he was up there and he combined them. Uh, I also thought uh, about my, um, my friend uh, Glyn Macy who is a fantastic uh, Cornish based uh, artist and a picture that he uh, painted recently uh, looking at the Song of the Sea which is in uh, Nan Gizzle and how he took little elements of that scene and combined, it and combined them together. So I thought I'd do something a little bit similar when I went to Cornwall this past weekend. So what I'm trying to do is trying to look at a, a scene and try and capture the different perspectives that I see and feel and observe when I'm in the location. And normally, if I'm just taking a landscape photograph, what I tend to do is set up a composition which I like, uh, set the settings and um, take the picture. In this case, I'm uh, taking a wide picture of uh, St Ives Bay uh, two second timer, ISO 160 and uh, F9 and take the picture. What this misses is the other things that I'm observing and what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to take some different pictures with different lenses and different approaches and see if I can layer those pictures in post-production to try and articulate a combination of all the things I'm seeing and feeling and what that will help me to do is uh, maybe when I'm not in a beautiful location as this and when I'm the weather isn't as nice as it is today I can still express what I see and feel as I'm walking along the southwest coast path. So I've got that first shot in the bag what I'm going to do now is uh, put on a um, 10 stop filter and uh, try and get a smoothed out picture uh, of the same thing so when I um, layer them I can have I can decide in post-production how much of that smoothed out picture I want then I'm going to switch up I'm going to change to uh, a longer lens and uh, maybe move into a vertical orientation and I'm going to do some ICM I'm going to take some pictures of the grasses I'm going to take some pictures of the rocks and then I'm going to try and combine them all in post-production. So I've now got my 10-stop uh, filter on, uh, and I've moved to a vertical orientation. Move the camera a bit, I've moved it down a little bit. I've uh, changed the orientation. I'm going to take a few, um, a little bit more capture of the rocks. And because I've still got the 10-stop uh, filter on, I'm going to be smoothing out of these, um, these waves that are, are, are pounding in. So let's take that.
And once I've taken that, I'm going to uh, switch up to uh, a longer lens and uh, try and do some, um, pick out some details on the beach. So I'm just focusing down on the rocks down here uh, on the beach and waiting with the water coming in. Um, and using my um, 55 to 200 lens, but I don't have a step up ring for my filters. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it on the, uh, the front of the lens. The wave is coming in. I'm using a two second timer because <laughs> I need to make sure that my uh, fingers are out the way of the, the lens before I start shooting. So with the uh, 10 stop filter I'm taking a one and a half, I'm taking a one and a half second um, shot. Right, okay, I'm going to move around, I take um, a couple of pictures of the rocks down uh, in the different part here with the water swelling up and then I'm going to try and do some ICM. Now I'm not calling this a technique, but what I'm trying to do <laughs> is get the different elements that I find interesting in this single location and express them in different ways and try and bring those together. Now, to be able to, for that to work in post-production, um, you need to be thinking, or I need to be thinking about uh, spaces where one picture might be able to fit on top of another. Uh, so I'm gonna start with a very wide picture and then uh, use that as the base to start building up different layers. So um, for each of these shots, I want to make sure that there's some space, either um, expansive sand uh, alongside a rock or the movement of the water or uh, just the, the waves so that um, the, the entire picture, the overall effect isn't so busy that it just is a, an attack on the eyeball. Uh, I want it to look peaceful because that's how I feel at the moment. This idea is about trying to express how I feel while I'm uh, out here on the coastline. So I switched up to my 18 to 55 lens, set at 18 at the moment. I put on a big stopper and I've set the shutter speed to half a second. And what I'm going to do is a little bit of ICM and I, I've use a couple of uh, different techniques. You can do something quite simple, which is just move the camera a tiny bit um, in a very small arc. Uh, what can be quite useful is if you turn on a two second timer and uh, you are moving the camera in a um, consistent manner for when the shutter is released. And that can give you quite nice um, effect. Generally with ICM, you're looking, you're trying to think of uh, a combination of um, blocks of colour. So in this case, we're looking at the block of colour, which is the sea, the block of colour, which is the grasses, and a block of colour, which is the cliffs and or the, um, or the sand. And try and uh, develop, uh, try and take shots so that you can get blocks of these colours that are working together. I've tried this also, this particular technique with uh, the longer lens and I find if I put it on the tripod and just use the, uh, the panning uh, of the, the uh, release the pan of the tripod then you can do this quite well. Other uh, techniques might be swiping or turning um, like this. Some of these pictures will be awful and some of them may be quite attractive. And you sort of never really know till you get home.
So the thing that I'm trying to achieve with the ICM is to evoke a sense of place. The, the blurring of the elements in the picture simplifies the picture uh, so that you get a sense of what was there rather than fine details of what was actually there. So you get a sense of the place rather than a, an exact uh, replication of what, what we saw. And so having that helps me to, to get a feeling of the place. So as I said, the, the, these blocks of colour are, are where you want to go and different uh, hand techniques or, or on the tripod can be used to try and get different um, effects. So quite frankly, I don't know if all of these pictures are going to be able to meld together uh, to make a nice picture or not. Um, but I'm here at the coast and uh, the tide's coming in quite quickly now. Uh, and so I thought I'd just take a couple of longer exposures or more of my standard type pictures. I may use them in the montage or I might just have them anyway. So whatever <laughs> ends up doing, I've had a beautiful couple of hours on the beach. Uh, it's been beautiful weather and I feel really lucky and blessed to be here. Um, and I've had fun trying to do some experiments. If it comes out, terrific. And if it's not, I've had a couple of hours on the beach making some photographs, so I've had a great time. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have uh, please give it a thumbs up maybe think about subscribing and I hope to see you on the next one and until then thanks for watching and bye for now